This video is going to cover how to take a file, an STL, for example, file, and bring it into SOLIDWORKS so that you can go and actually modify it and then utilize it in other software products like AutoCAD. So on the screen that you will see under the MakerBot thingiverse, the shield, uh, not the shield, the um, keeper for the face masks that uh, first responders are wearing, and it's a 3D printed item. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer, but you do have access, for example, to a laser or some other type of cutting tool, um, and you want to utilize this pattern so that you can help the community and also be able to cut things, not necessarily build it on a 3D printer, but literally cut this shape out off of some other material, that's what I'm going to be showing in this video. So as you can see here, people are making these and the, the healthcare workers are using them. The idea, and that was uh, this young gentleman right here who did it, and uh, here are some examples of other people that have taken it on. So this is a neat product, a neat idea, uh, but if you don't have access to a 3D printer, what do you do? And how can you use this? You, if you have access to SOLIDWORKS, which is technically free right now uh, for download, for like a 30-day trial. If you have access to AutoCAD, for those of you that might be students in programs like mine, you'll have access to both AutoCAD and SOLIDWORKS as well as Inventor. I'm gonna show how to do it in SOLIDWORKS not for any particular reason other than I want to show how the different products work with each other. Inventor comes from the same family as AutoCAD, so it's not a bad idea to show you how to work with SOLIDWORKS and how to work with AutoCAD. And that's what this video will show you. So here's the part. And the first thing you'd want to do is download it. It's open source, which means anybody can do this. And I went ahead and downloaded it. And it's over here under the project work that I'm working on, um, including I'm working on a face shield design. So it's here. You can't really open this uh, except for in this format, but you can't do anything with it. So you can view it, but that's it. So in order to actually access this file, we have to go into SOLIDWORKS, and that's right here. And let me maximize SOLIDWORKS, okay? And then you basically do File and Open. And you have to make sure you say All Files because SOLIDWORKS, just like Inventor, can open up a whole bunch of different type of file types. In our case, this is, uh, may not be an STL file, it's some other 3D file that's uh, accessible by a 3D printer. In our case, we don't have one. I don't have one, so I'm going to go to All Files. I find the item in question, there it is, and I hit Open, and it does actually open this file. It looks like you can do stuff with it, but you really can't. It's right here. It's a graphic file, okay? So it's, it's literally a skin of a product. It's not real. I can't do anything with it. Um, it is not, you know, it does have, I mean, the, the traditional planes for SOLIDWORKS are there, but if I want to utilize this uh, in a different product, I need to be able to take the footprint of this thing, which would actually be essentially this view, and bring it over to the other products. So in my case, I want to bring it over to AutoCAD. So what I can do, if I click on this item, I can, let's say, go ahead and create a sketch. And if I pick that face, there's my face. And then what I can do is convert entities and I can try all I want, and you can try this yourself, and you'll find out that as you look at this object, you cannot actually do anything with it. It is a ghost image. I can click all I want, nothing will happen. Convert entities doesn't work. If you pick intersection curve, and I pick this object, you see that? See how it picked that? Pick the whole object. If I hit OK, and you see how it says Extract Mesh Intersection, okay, very important. When you click OK to this, it's going to go through its, as I call it, its gymnastics. And it will freeze, because <laughs> this takes a while, as you can tell. And I'm working with uh, an upper end uh, computer when I'm doing this to extract that 
intersection mesh. Now granted it picked the entire object. And there you go. Okay, I needed you to see that and I needed you to see how long that would take so you understand that it's not a simple, straightforward process. The reason it took so long is because of the amount of data that it was interpolating. And you can see that, in, I call it interpolation, sorry. You could see that in how many little points of intersections that you'll find. The best thing to do at this point is to take this object, if you hide it, okay, it sees the 2D flat pattern that's remaining. Now you have the opportunity to see all these little points of contact because that's how the data was interpreted when it was uh, converted. Now remember, convert entities did not work. You had to pick intersection curve but you have to be patient with it. You have to let it do its job. So now when you get close, you can find, or you could try to find, the center of this object. Roughly right about here, sort of. Okay, and then you can actually go ahead and put in a circle. Mm, close, but no cigars, see that? Not quite on target. So you could delete that and notice what I'm doing. I'm actually going to move this object manually. Say I've got from to, and now you'll notice I can't just drag it too easily. It is attached to the one side. You see that? Whee! See how it's attached? So you do have to be mindful of that. And no matter what you're doing, bingo, you're eyeballing it. Mm -mm. Let's try that again. No, no, no. There we go. That was done visually. That was not done with any degree of uh, science. That was pure, whoops, and then I deleted it. <laughs> that happens as well. <laughs> I was not paying attention, obviously. You want to click Smart Dimension so you can see what size this is. This is in metric, okay? Why? Because that's the default settings that came up. So I'm going to make it six millimeters because I'm um, nice, simple numbers I like to work with. So I have this object. Now I have something that's six millimeters, so I can literally go and erase, yes, I know, the rest of these objects because they will actually make life harder for you when you get to the laser. You don't want it to see every single data point. You want it to see smooth intersections. It'll just make it easier to work with your laser. So I made that connection. That's one done, a whole bunch to go. If you want to be like me, and I will encourage you to be lazy, as I like to call it, efficient you'll mirror this and then you'll pattern it across until you get this group done and then you'll mirror the whole family to the other side and be done with it so i do recommend you just basic basically make half of this not the whole part and you'll be good to go so that would be my advice you notice i wiped out half of it already uh, just as i was talking i was doing it this isn't perfectly centered from what i can tell that's all right, I can work with that. Because I can move the entire object to center. And then we can actually um, go in and, and manipulate the content. I'm not interested in, uh, I'm not going to go through the whole video with you to show you. Uh, I'm going to pick from two. Start point is going to be that intersection end point will be right there so they're basically centered uh, and then I'm just going to trim off the side yes I know and on the, you'll, you'll see how it says it's midpoint a whole bunch of stuff it wants to keep warning you as you eliminate objects and that's okay uh, once you have this design settled Okay, and let's say, are you okay out of it? I'm gonna stop at this point, just to move to the next part of the uh, video. Once you have this 
set up the way you want it to be. You can literally, so you've got the save option, okay? And then what you have is a opportunity, if you were so inclined, to take this sketch. First I got it, there we go, get out of it. And you have the opportunity to do a, uh, you could do a save selection, which of course works. And then you have a whole set of options, go to, create, collapse, rename. You can t go, up, go turn around and do uh, a save as, and you have the opportunity in here to go ahead and save it as a DXF right there. When you save this as a DXF, word of advice from someone who's done this way too many times, I uh, don't recommend you just jump to the next step. Step. I would ask that you go to options, okay? And instead of picking the R2000 version, this is a word of advice from someone who works with way too much equipment, which isn't always modern equipment. Save it as a release 12 DXF. I know it sounds a little weird to tell you that, but it is actually probably the best release to, to save everything at when it comes to DXF files, because that is uh, such a well-known version in, um, on so many different platforms of different types of laser equipment that's out there that you cannot go wrong with it. I know that it gives you like a gazillion versions to choose from, not a gazillion, but still, you have many versions to choose for, from I automatically always pick release 12 because I get zero bugs when I go to release 12. So when you do that, you just go ahead and say, yeah, and you hit OK. Okay. When you hit save, you're going to get a, there you go. You're going to get this op set of options here. So you have to identify what do you want to save? Faces, edges, annotation view. This view is fine. Current view, single file. When you hit OK, it goes into here, it shows you exactly what it's going to send, which is really good. Here is an opportunity where you can remove entities if you want. In my case, I'm leaving it as is. I hit the save button and then I jump over to AutoCAD. Okay, and I have a file in here already of a different type that I was working with a different type of keeper. And now I'm just gonna go ahead. Now, this is not in inches. This is why I want you to see this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit import and I'm going to go ahead and pick other formats. And there it is, my, my uh, remix. When I hit open, nothing happens. I zoom all, nothing happens. You can't really import a DXF is my point. What you need to do is file open, okay? And you actually go ahead and find the mask keeper, go into files. Whoops, did I save it in here? Yes, I did, right there. Surgical mask. By the way, remember where you see it. Save your work. Always do that. Hit open, and voila, there you have it. And it will come in because I'm a, a teacher and I'm teaching how to do this. I do use the educational version. It will come in with this language, which is really easy. Just click on it and delete it, and voila, now you have this. Uh, unit here in AutoCAD for you to go ahead and work with. Now you'll notice that it's, when you look at the units, the way that I got to this, by the way, forgive me for um, doing it without thinking about it, I typed in the command units, okay? You can go to units and it'll tell you the units of the work that you have in front of you. You have to be extremely careful with this. If you do not define the units of your part. You can't do much with it. In order to build it, you have to have the units. Now we know what the units were because they were here in SolidWorks, right? When we were talking about units in the lower uh, right corner, it says custom. So the thing is, let's look at the graphic. Actually, what I'm gonna do is go to the internet It doesn't really tell me much, but you can guess by looking at the person's head. About halfway looks maybe about four inches or so. So these might be roughly eight inches long, roughly. Now, if I drop in a dimension here in AutoCAD, roughly, and I'm gonna just pick a spot. I'm gonna pick this spot here and I'm gonna go to the center. I get 81 as a unit. Now it said unitless, right? 
So then your question is, well, what units is that? So you can go to your dimension style, which is under annotate, and bingo, there's your units, ISO. If you see ISO-25, that means it's metric. It's dimensioning it in metric. This is a metric part, okay? It, we knew that earlier because I had shown you over here in SOLIDWORKS. Right now it says custom because of, uh, uh, I think, what I had done to the part, but before that it had shown that it was in metric. So keep that in mind. So when you're over here in AutoCAD, you have to appreciate it's in the metric system. So you can either do the math to, to convert if you are not using the metric system. You can also just go into modify for your dimension style and go over to uh, alternate units. And you can display alternate units and you can identify inches so that way you can see what units of measurement you're looking at. Now you'll see when it says uh, multiplier, you'll notice that the multiplier is the can only multiply. Okay, keep that again. Multiply. Normally, I would tell everybody just take 25.4. You'll either take the inches and multiply it by 25.4, or you'll take the millimeters and divide it by 25.4, and that is how you go back and forth between inches and millimeters. If you cannot do that, this is how it does it. It's that decimal equivalent of what I'm saying because it has to only multiply. So if I hit OK and I hit Close, oh, that I actually had OK, that I actually selected was my question. I may not have. So let me go back in there. When I'm talking, I'm not necessarily doing things correctly. I'm going to go back to ISO. There's a style override, but I, I'm going to go to ISO itself. I'm going to go to Modify. Alternate units, turn it, eh, I guess I didn't turn them on. Hit OK and hit Close. Voila, so 3.2 inches, which means that this particular item is probably uh, approximately <clears throat> seven, um, uh, six and a half inches long in its finished shape. Now, if you're stronger as an AutoCAD user, you can actually get this done rather quickly. If you're not, um, then you might want to do this in SOLIDWORKS. The reason this is faster in, um, in AutoCAD is because if you know how to uh, use the commands in AutoCAD, then you can actually pretty much line things up. You'll notice what I'm doing is identifying the midpoint for the whole, for the sole purpose of mirroring the shape to the other side. And you'll notice it's not mirrored perfectly. So this part itself has uh, isn't, isn't identical. How it was created is not perfectly symmetrical. Now what you might find out is a laser round objects might not be the best choice, okay? So these are round, and that may, may have been just because of that's what the designer wanted to do. As you could tell, they're round. You can also choose to do like this other design, you see this, which results in the same outcomes. It's only five inches long, though, and it will achieve the same, um, the same results are achieved, but it's, the design is technically a little different. This part is probably the one I'm going to go with because it's the one that I've started. Uh, but, it, but the critical thing about why I wanted to download the other part is I wanted to see how long it actually was. And if you have an interest in doing that, then you can also get that same information by doing this and find out how long is the part for some other project you may have by downloading an STL if you don't physically have the item in front of you so that way you could take measurements and do whatever else you want to do. Hopefully this video helped you. Again, it's about how to modify things in working from an STL type file, 3D print file, down to SOLIDWORKS, down to AutoCAD. Take care.